Hello, everyone. This is Peach, my official mascot, just, just because she needs a title. I am going to be talking about how to make the most out of uh, this event this year. Um, we had a lot of people who came in with some ideas, and when it was over, uh, we had a few others who wonderfully took the initiative to put together a what would you change, what worked, what, what was different. And um, I'm just a little bit about myself. Prior to my launch with social media back October 2014, uh, a very good friend of mine introduced me to a uh, public relations lady who took the time to sit me down and gave me a crash course on public relations, advertising, marketing, the works. Uh, she's the one who kind of gave me a, this is what you need to do, this is how you do what you need to do. It is quite literally the secret to what I've been doing for the past year. Um, so this is me passing on some of that information to you so you have an idea um, how to make the most of this because it is a huge opportunity and it's one that if it's not handled not just right but if, if it's if it's handled incorrectly um, you're not going to see as large of an uh, of a push as you can get from it. Um, last year we had some people who knew exactly what they were doing and they did a hard push. They did it in the right way and it got them substantial results. While others reported in, okay, I didn't see anything, I don't understand what I did wrong. This video is to clarify what, you, what does work and what we found doesn't work with, with this event. That way you, you are able to get the most out of it because again, it is a three day event and you really don't want to miss this opportunity. You really don't want to squander it or do something that isn't as productive, but it's a lot of work. Um, the primary thing, and this is true of anything, is of course the advertising. Uh, you do want to reach your readers. You do want to reach your public base. Um, if you have a website, that is going to be one of your most primary power tools. Um, because everything you do should be bringing people toward that website. Everything that you put out, everything you speak against, um, if you go to any social media, whether it be pla uh, whether it be Twitter or Google+, Facebook, there is a section there where it says list your website. And most people, if they are interested in what you are selling, if they're interested in you, the first thing they're going to do is select that official site that brings them to you. When they do that, the first thing they're going to want to see on your website, well, the first thing you want them to see on your website, is something that very clearly, first of all, it's a call to action. It is number one, that's what should be on your homepage of your website, is a call to action. Um, that call to action is going to draw in their attention, and you don't want a lot of distractions, you don't want them all over the place you want them to very clearly see what it is they're supposed to do when they're there. A perfect example every time I see it is uh, with Dropbox. If you go to dropbox.com and you go to their website, there is one very clear message there and that's, my cats are loud, and that is sign up for this, uh, sign up for Dropbox. There, There is no question asked, that that's what you do. Um, it, it's it's absolutely wonderful. If you, if you go to thunderclap.com, it's a promote your thunderclap. This is what we are. Now do it. It, it. There's very little room to argue. So when somebody gets to your website, the first thing that they should see is a very clearly defined call to action. Um, and on my website, I'm, I'm not going to talk about my website because it's kind of it, it. It there's a lot. Um, but if your goal is to have them get there and buy your books, that should be your call to action. If you are wanting to drive this promotion through, um, that's one of the things you put out there is a call to action. You can embed it in your website, the link for the Thunderclap to gain supporters. Um, you put advertising banners up and says this is what's going on. If you have a news page uh, or an events page going, um, you should have it there. Uh, anything to communicate to your to your ongoing fans and your subscribers, this is what's going out. If you send out newsletters on your website, push it through there. Uh, let people know and remind them. It, it does take reminding. People do forget the minute they select off of something, the minute it's no longer in front of them. Uh, website surfers are programmed that as soon as it's out of their face, they forget. So you want to put that in their face as much as possible. I know on your end it does feel like you're pushing too much, but but really, it, it's it, it's only feeling that way because it's in front of your face all the time. In front of theirs, it's a split second and then they're gone. Um, in Twitter, it, they may not even see it. So uh, put up banners, um, Twitter, wh wherever you want. And by all means, don't do something you're not comfortable with. Um, I, I'm the kind of person who says if you're not comfortable with it, it should be done, but I've got issues. So, so 
Um, I, I, I love pushing myself beyond my comfort zone, so uh, others are not. So if you are fond of pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone, plaster it everywhere. Um, if you do like to exercise on the, on the side of caution and you're not comfortable pushing it in front of people's faces, do what you are comfortable with. Um, and there is no rules. I'm not going to go around checking on everyone to make sure you're doing your part. There is absolutely no babysitting here. Zero. Um, this is only my recommendation. This is what I suggest to you. And if you don't follow the rules exactly, yeah, I really don't care. We really don't have rules. Um, uh, the only thing I can really tell you is if I find posts where it's just by my book splattered all over here, I'm going to delete them. But no one's, no one's does that. Um, and the day before the fairgrounds, two to three days prior to the fairgrounds, I will be sorting through uh, the primary event, making sure there's no help, um, authors asking for help, those will all get deleted. Um, it wa we want it to be featured towards the reader, which which brings me to my next uh, my next point of conversation is bringing it to your readers. Um, a lot of authors make the mistake. I I did this very much um, at first of designing your website to gear toward other writers. Every time you post an article that says "Learn how to write" or "Here's a writing tip," you are that article is not geared or directed towards your writers. It or towards your readers. It's directed towards your writers. Um, so what's going to end up happening is you're going to have one writer who comes to your website, sees some excellent writing tips, and say, hey, I can use this. Let me pass it on to my writing friends. So what you end up having is a collection of writers going in and not readers. So um, I found once, I, 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 it was a wonderful, wonderful article, which I posted somewhere on my website, a link to it. I didn't have copyright laws. So I provided a link on my website that takes you to this article. And it basically explains one of the mistakes most writers make is they keep pushing pushing uh, writer tips, they keep pushing author advice, and what they end up doing is getting their, their primary audience are just more writers. And then they go, I don't understand why I'm not getting any readers. So the first thing you want to do is cater your website and structure it so that it's reader interesting material. Um, what books are you reading? And this is where I can pull up my site here and just go over it very quickly. Um, I have story time. I have featured reads. And then I have these little things that I put at the end of my books. And this is just an example here. Uh, one of the things that I put at the end of all my books is a secret password. So if you finish one of my books, I have a congratulations, you have unlocked blank. It's broken. And I'm just going to open it to the back here and I'll show you. Um, so you finish the book. Um, I have a disclaimer here. And then I have a thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for your support. May the kindest of words always find you. And then at the end of Broken, I have congratulations. You have unlocked the looking glass. Go to my website, search the looking glass, and enter the password blank to access the special features reserved just for you. Um, I also have the same thing at the end of Dolor and Shadow. I have the same thing in, uh, at the end of my story to you in the third anthology, the anthology that I'm in, uh, Amor Vincent Omnia. Uh, the reason why um, I've done this is because I have special bonus features, password protected, only by readers of, of my books. Um, so it's again very reader oriented. So now I've got this massive reader base after a year. So I punch through, hey, I have the cyber convention going on, and I'm not going to be filtering it to a bunch of writers who pass it on to their writers' friends. I'm going to be passing it on to a bunch of readers and their re reader friends who says, hey, a bunch of writers are getting together. They're they're offering giveaways. Come join me. So that's the benefit of having your website website shaped and structured after readers and not writers. So, um, and and that was like I said when I last April I was still pushing for writers without realizing it. So when we and we all were doing that. So when we pushed it through, what ended up happening was we had a lot of writers coming in, and then those writers said, "Hey, I want to be part of this," which was great. Um, but we were all writers, and very few of us had readers who we could actually reach out to connect with and say hey um you you want to <laughs> you want to bring in some some reader friends with you um so that's that's no longer an issue um and i've spoken around to a few people and we definitely have a stronger reader base this year so um i cannot communicate this enough make sure you reach out to readers make sure you communicate to your audience that this is just this is for readers this is a bunch of uh, authors putting on this massive entertainment for the readers. Last year, the uh, the name of the convention was Author Cyber Convention, which also communicated to people that readers aren't invited. It actually hurt us, so we changed the name. 
uh, we submitted that through and we're already seeing a, a definitely a different uh, different outcome. So um, as far as getting the most out of it, um, advertising correctly to the right people, um, making sure that you, you do your part with the thunderclap, making sure you do your part with the banners and the advertising, and communicating it out there, what, what it is we have, what service we're offering. Um, and we have four months. A lot of people are like, really, it's January and this is in April? The event is that big. It does require that amount of work. Now, here's the beauty of all this, and now I'm going to sit back and talk about exactly how to make the most out of this. Um, the day of, and th this next part is specifically going to talk about not the preparation work that leads up to April 8th. It's actually what you're going to be doing on April 8th, 9th, and 10th. So from now till April, you're going to be pushing the advertising, and I recommend you push it hard. Have a weekly, a daily reminder, follow up with your reader, send it out in your newsletters. Now setting that aside, we're going to focus on April 8th, 9th, 10th, the day of the convention. What will work for you? Um, one of the first things that I noticed last year was that we are, we are mixed genres. We are not just fantasy fans or fantasy writers. We are not just fiction writers. We are everything. If it's been written, we had cookbooks last year. So if it is written, people are there. What this means, and this, this is where it's mind-boggling. Uh, what this means is when I have a fantasy reader come in, I'm going to have, um, well, let's say, I'll, t I'll use my daughter. My daughter is 12 years old. She's into fantasy. So she comes into this group, and there are children there. Uh, she comes into the group. Now, she's going to want to look for books that appeal her. But what ended up happening last year was a lot of threads were labeled so that it read a person's name specifically afterwards, um, so that, I'll use myself as an example, it said Angela B. Chrysler, author of Dolor and Shadow. Now, nothing in there communicated that it was fantasy or young adult middle grade. There was just no communication on a quick glance as to what that thread was going to be about. So what ended up happening was a lot of people were, were thread jumping. Some did bother to go through all of them, but at the end of the day, you really didn't know what you were walking into until you opened it up. Imagine a massive shopping mall, and you're not sure exactly the titles of all the stores. Actually, no, think, think of it very much as a shopping mall, um, the fairgrounds. Um, you want to communicate right away to the readers what you represent, what they're going to find there. Um, on my thread, I'm going to post fantasy. That way, anyone who has any interest in fantasy is going to see that thread and come on in. Um, now, once they're there, <laughs> they're mine. Uh, once they're there, uh, then I introduce myself. I provide a short bio, and this brings me to ooh, how to utilize your thread so that it best suits you. Um, when you open up a thread, um, you're going to want to do a simple introduction. There is something called reader overload. Um, again, readers, not readers, but uh, people online, uh, website surfers, have trained our minds to decrease our attention span. Um, and it's this. There, there's a massive study behind this as to what exactly our our attention span looks like, and it, it's it's frightening. It really is. So, <coughs> excuse me. That being said, you're looking at you're looking at wanting to communicate as quickly and concisely as possible. Um, I cannot emphasize this enough. I'm looking for the thread now. I'm going to hop on over to the fairgrounds. And let me see if I can find my own information from last year. Let's see here. <clears throat> Basically, what you're going to do is you want to communicate to them right away exactly what it is that you do and who you are. You want to keep it concise and simple. This is where if you have very little to say, you're going to want to keep there it is, Dolor and Shadow Dark Fantasy. All right, so you go in here. I have a welcome, thank you, here I am. And it's probably a 200 word, it, it's not even, it's a very brief bio. It's this is who I am, this is what you can find here. Underneath that, I've posted my hours. I will be here from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the day of the convention every day. Here is my email address. And then I have a short here on my personal giveaways. Underneath that, I have an About Dollar and Shadow. Underneath that, I have private giveaways. And that's in addition to uh, the mass giveaway. This is what I'm offering solo. 
And then I have a recommendation page. And I can't speak to you enough how much the recommendation page really, really does a lot because this is all about cross promoting. Um, the recommendations that I made are people who very much are in the same writing style or the same genre. So I love using Schneider as an example because she and I are very close and we we really, I don't know when, when we bonded. It was just, our relationship really took off here in the last year, especially on board the Slush Brain. If you know me, you should know the Slush Brain. If not, just Google Angela's Chrys uh, Angela Chrysler Slush Brain. You'll find it. <laughs> it's involved. Um, but she and I got, she and I really grew close over the, the Slush Brain. And her audience and readers are very much matched up to mine. If you enjoy her books, you're probably going to enjoy mine. So we do a lot of cross promoting. We do a lot of you know, if you enjoy this person, you're probably going to enjoy mine as well and vice versa. Um, what that ended up happening is her audience and my audience have joined together as in this collaboration. So um, I also, I did the same thing with Stan Sudan's work. His, his readers are also similar to my readers. So we're pooling our sources together to triple our audience. So recommendations are huge. Um, keep it short, keep it simple. This is where you can overload your reader by providing them too much information. And there's something, it's really, this is the part that fascinates me. Um, we are programmed that if you open up a book and you see a long paragraph without any breaks, you are, your immediate response is, ugh. But if you see something short and simple, you know, like a good 300 to 400 word paragraph, it's like, oh, I can do that. And you get right into it. And in fact, if you see something that's a 100 word paragraph, it's actually, and it's consistently 100 words, it's, it's discouraging. There's something about that where you're just like, oh, there's nothing real information in there that I can't obtain and actually take with me. So we tend to skip over 100 word paragraphs. It's, I love the psychology of readers. It's fascinating. So yes, um, you want a good chunk that says, I'm short, I'm fast. Yeah. <laughs> Get in there, read the information, jump out again, and move on. And there is a, you don't want to make it too short, but you don't want to overwhelm them. So keep your recommendations brief. Keep your bio brief. Give them links to say, hey, here's where you can go to get this information. Think of your thread, think of your booth, as a landing page so that you get in there, you locate the information you're looking for, buy my books, here's the information, this is what you'll be getting here. And give them the information. Um, and I'm looking through this. Not once did I utilize the... Oh, I don't think you can. I'm looking this over and nowhere does it say add book or author. And I'm going, well, why didn't I use that? So um, that's, that's foolish. Absolutely use the about the author, add the book, add the author feature that's, offer, uh, that's here. Um, also, we had a scavenger hunt last year that did not... That was difficult. That was very complicated. So I'm not discussing the scavenger hunt at, at, at all this year. It was just a lot of work, and it it was very confusing. Um, so when you basically when you have a thread, you you don't want to launch into this massive. This is who I am. This is where I'm from. This is my back history. That's what your bio is for on your website. Um, I recommend a very brief. This is who I am. This is what you'll find here. Here's my link if you want to know more about me. And leave it, leave it literally that vague um, because, again, they're not, mostly they're here for the giveaways, mostly they're here for the freebies. Okay, I have to disclose this information because it's just fascinating. Um, I live in an amazing area. I live in Endicott, New York. About down the street is the, are the official IBM buildings. Uh, we are home of the Speedy Fest, and most of you are going to go, what's a Speedy? It's marinated chicken on a bun. But, and it, it's a coin that was phrased here, Lupo's, Lupo's sauce, Lupo's, uh, Lupo's speedy sauce is, it's absolutely founded here. We have a huge speedy fest. Celebrities come in. I mean, it is big. Uh, we have hot air, a massive balloon fest uh, in, in August every year. Um, I also live about five miles from Penguin Putnam Publishing, the warehouse where they make the books for Penguin. Oh yeah, it's great. So every November, they have to clean inventory. <laughs> this, this is where you'll drool, because this is like, ha! Huh. Every November, Penguin has to clean out their inventory, and they amass all of their overstock to Endicott, New York. And they dump all of their books, everything, 
in the Penguin Publishing Warehouse. And they open it up to the public and say, yeah, we're talking dirt cheap books, like a dollar a piece. Come in and help yourselves. I, <laughs> and this is like an annual thing for my girlfriends and I, where we go to Penguin with, with like, you've seen, have you seen, I, I need to like do a snapshot. It, it's, it's up there. I, I have a wall to ceiling bookshelf and I'm, I'm dead serious. A wall to ceiling bookshelf of nothing but books. And that's because of the Penguin book, sh book fair. Um, every November you go in and there are like people, myself, who go in with these massive bags and we just fill them. Oh, every book is about a dollar. I think the most there is five dollars. And it's every Penguin book you can think of. Classics, bestsellers, it is their overstock and they dump it on you. Oh yeah, it's great. You no, know, you have like, I'm just like frothing at the mouth over this. So, um... And honestly, when I built the Cyber Convention, I, I thought a lot about the Penguin Putnam book sale they have every November. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, like I said, I live in a wonderful place. I, I'm trying to focus now because I'm thinking about the book fair. The book fair, um, it was literally wall to ceiling. It's a warehouse. Uh, think Walmart, except it's literally just tables and wall to ceiling of nothing but books. Books. They overflowed into crates on the floor and you just walk through there and you browse the selection and then there was a lot of mingling there was a lot of comparing books it was I, I just I wish I could explain the magnitude of this like Barnes and Noble except it wasn't a business it was just a here get rid of our overstock imagine if Barnes and Noble suddenly announced okay we're going casual books are now a dollar just come in and help yourselves and you can and there is no buy your book, get out. And the registers were lined up so it's just, and there was no sales pitch. There was no, oh, would you like to try something else today? Can I help you find, no, th that's all gone. It's just a quick get through, a slide everything through, like like Sam's Club, but it's all books. I mean, it was just, it's very casual. It's very wonderful. And there would be collections of book hoarders. That's what we are, book hoarders, where we would just stand there and compare books and, hey, where'd you find that? And it, it was wonderful. And like I said, it was like a thing. We would compare to see who could fill their bag the fastest, who could find the most books. I mean, it was just exotic. It was wonderful. And this is exactly what the air and the aura that the CyberCon absolutely captures. So the readers are there absolutely to hoard books, to collect books. So I'm, I'm saying absolutely push giveaways. Let them know right off I'm offering giveaways. I'm offering freebies. Um, if you if you do A, B, and C, you'll get this. One of the things I pulled off this last year that really helped, and I'm just I'm floored with the response I got. I needed subscribers. They say if you have more than 25 newsletter subscribers, that you're off to a good store, start, and that sub, that group will go on to become your biggest supporters, your biggest word of advertising. Remember, word of mouth is the strongest advertising tool out there. If you focus on word of mouth and nothing else, you'll be set. So word of mouth is huge. And basically, I wanted to boost my number of subscription subscribers. So I put together this last November, a holiday book giveaway. Um, I just threw it out there. I'm like, yeah, um, I need donations. If you guys are wanting to throw together a donation, I'm offering it to my subscribers. You have to subscribe to my website. And then you have to comment below. And I was able then, and I think only 20 people actually, no, 30 people, 28 people, something like that, participated. Uh, but you should have seen the amount of subscri sorry, subscribers I got. I'm up to 150 now. Um, what ended up happening was I had a lot of authors who came together. I had more than 50 authors donate books. Mind you, this was all for my own petty, selfish reasons. And I felt guilty about that because I'm like, you guys know it's just to get me subscribers and I make that very clear in in my wording that they had to subscribe to my website it, it was just amazing um, I was expecting other people to kind of jump on board and say hey come to my website subscribe and comment for a chance for a chance to win this jackpot and no one, no one did it, and I'm not really certain why, because I would have easily cross-referenced them. So, the moral of this, this convention, I plan on running another one, where I'm going to say, subscribe to my website, comment below, 
Um, this is the private personal giveaway I'm going in. I'm probably going to focus it mostly on fantasy fans, fantasy readers, and I kind of would like to go just paperbacks. I, I would like to just paperbacks. I, I'm not certain yet what I'm going to do. The details will be available. But just to give you an idea, this is one of the things I'm going to be doing because with an accumulation of everybody at the convention, I'm going to want to take that concept in and add it. Um, the 50 authors I got for this back in November, December, that was just me tweeting out a couple things. So with the insurmountable number of people coming together for this one, I'm anticipating a much larger explosion of enthusiasm. So I talk with my hands a lot. So um, that's that's another idea that you put out there, uh, or that I that I'm putting out there. That um, you know, generate business, generate it to your website. Um, you want to gain the newsletter subscribers. Um, if you say buy my book, they'll go over. They might buy your book, and that might be the end of it. But if you say join my website, you can send them now a monthly reminder with every newsletter. Hey, buy my book. In case you haven't already, buy it. So it's, <laughs> it, there's definitely, you really do want to drive home that subscription list if you, if you are focused on that. And if you're not focused on that, another uh, way you can generate a good boost from, or a, a good uh, a boost of, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but you know what I'm trying to say. To make the most of this fair, um, another thing you can do, um, let me just think for a moment. Oh, one of the things that we had that was just an absolute grand time. By day three, um, I'm, and I'm crediting him, Stan Sudan, <laughs> he started, I don't know where he got the idea, it was just delightful. He threw out there a cotton candy stand, or apple cider cotton candy, I don't know, it was wonderful. He stopped by at my booth and he said, here, I'm passing out candy apples, would you like one? And I'm just like, yeah, it's all cyber, who cares? But he gave me a candy apple, and he started making making runs and it launched this somebody else turned around and did um and did popcorn candy popcorn um i turned around and did funnel cakes <laughs> it was it, it was wonderful people saw funnel cakes amid the fairgrounds and they jumped into those threads and it was something quick like yeah i'm offering a giveaway have a funnel cake and enter the giveaway if you want to enter the giveaway purchase a funnel cake and that was that was how you entered um, it was it was just a delightful idea that he came up with. Um, so it was just wonderful. So oh, I'm so excited. So by all means, um, if you if you come up with a a, a a festival, a fair, or a circus food that is you're particularly fond of, create that booth, post it up there, and say, hey, if you want to enter this giveaway, make a purchase. And, and it's all cyber. It's all pretend, but. You know, purchase a funnel cake and you'll be entered to win whatever. And you'll see, people will comment. Um, it, it was just, it's absolutely delightful. Um, I'm trying to think what else we had this year, last year. But uh, little things like that, it really went a long way. And it cannot tell you enough how much it added to the entertainment, to the fun factor of the fair. That was one of the most delightful things. Um, I would love... Um, and I'm going to be doing this. Um, I would love a good handful of people who are just reporting on the event. Uh, bloggers, where you just go in and you um, you report on it for the three days. Uh, write up an article at the end of each day, explain how it's going. I One lady did that when it was all done and said, and she's the only one who did it. And it was the most wonderful, warmest, delightful article I'd ever read. And... I, I, I wish I could find it. I, try, I spent a good hour yet uh, this weekend trying to find this article. I couldn't find it. I'm like, where is this article? It was beautiful. And it was just, it was very warm and heartfelt and very, you know, this is what it's, this is what it's like. And it was a great example to share with you. So my video is at 29 minutes and I am a firm believer that I not go over 30. Uh, so I'm going to close it here, but, um, there's a lot of ideas floating around. By all means, step over at the volunteer, idea, volunteer and idea group. This is over at Backstage. And you'll see a lot of people looking for things, offering suggestions, um, saying, look, I'm looking for authors who are interested in doing this. Let me know what you think. This is very much your convention, and I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, there is no asking me permission. This is not my convention. It is your convention, and I just manage it. So if you have an idea, by all means, do it. 
uh, throw it out there, have fun with it. Um, don't be afraid to make it genre related. If you are a romance author and you're wanting to just do something with romance fans, do it. If you are, and I'm probably going to grab this while I'm thinking of it, fantasy fans dibbed. <laughs> I just realized I would love to do a little something with just the fantasy fans. Um, so, and it'll be detailed. So if you come up with something else that's fantasy related, yeah, have fun with it, do whatever. But I do have an idea that I want to put out there for fantasy fans. So take a look over there for that. And I, I really need to do uh, science fiction as well because a lot of my readers are also into science fiction. So anything else I can think of, anything else you can think of, by all means share it. Um, we're very, very open, very laid back. Uh, this very much does have a festival fair feel to it, like the Renaissance Festival. Very laid back. So don't, there's, no, there's really no rules, guidelines, restrictions. Have fun. Really, have fun. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video. And thank you very much for listening to me yet for 30 minutes. Hope this helped. And if you have any other suggestions, ideas, or questions, by all means, please throw them my way. Thank you.